Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the easy solution between honeybees and wanting more pollinators in your yard. As you guys may or may not know, honeybees are incredibly difficult to care for. And it's actually recommended that you take courses and classes on how to keep honeybees before you do so. You can have diseases, colony collapses, and literally almost anything in between. It is not for the faint of heart. I actually took a course on beekeeping as an elective in university, and unless you're in 100%, honeybees are not the greatest choice for just your average gardener. However, there is a solution and it's made by a Canadian company that both ships to the US and Canada as well as you can find it in PV Mart and TSC, so tractor stores company all across Canada, coast to coast. So the solution is leaf cutter bees and we're going to be going through exactly how to keep these guys, what's involved with them, what to expect with these. And it's just, I'm hooked on this whole idea and we'll get into exactly why. I'll be showing you guys more of the products towards the end of the video, but they have everything from just the pollinators to a pollinator hut to just a little cube. Like they just have so many different options at so many different price points and I'm, I'm in love so far. So the company is called Backyard Pollinator. They are in Saskatchewan and if you know the highway between Saskatoon and Regina, the high, the blue huts that are kind of right by Keniston area, that is where this company is from. So it's ran by a family, it's a small company, and they are just the kindest people ever. If you guys have absolutely any questions, be sure to check them out on Facebook at under Backyard Pollinators, Instagram, YouTube, you name it, they have it. Okay, yes, I did have to change, but in my defense, I am Canadian and I am in the middle of Canada so one of like the colder spots in Canada and it has been minus like 20 30 40 50 for a day or two where I am and now it's zero or it's like minus three ish and I am hot like stupid hot so laugh get it out of your system I am so Canadian it's not even funny okay. Let's get back to pollinators. <laughs> One of the details about these leaf cutter bees that I enjoy the most is the fact that they are not only super pollinators, which we'll get into a little bit later, but they are non-aggressive. So they won't bite you if they are away from the hive, on their flowers, doing their own thing. They won't, they won't sting. And they also won't even sting to defend their nest. So that means you can actually place the nest relatively close to a seating area. You don't want it in a high traffic area because you don't want to scare them. But if you have it in a low uh, traffic, just a seating area, you can have them in, in that position and they will not bite, meaning they are pet friendly and they are child friendly. And so I researched the crap out of this to ensure that this is 100% correct and it is. The only way you will get bitten by a leaf cutter bee is if you actually squish them. Like if you try to hold them or like put pressure on them, that's the one time that they do sting. And when they do sting, it's like way less than a wasp or a bumblebee sting. It's like a little nick type thing. So it's probably, it's explained closer to like a horse fly bite, which is painful. Don't get me wrong, but it's not horrendously painful. So. That is actually really cool thing about these guys. Not aggressive towards anything. Like they're just super, super calm. The other huge bell that went off for me was that they are super pollinators. And now I'm not a pollinator buff and I don't know a ton about pollinators, but when I was reading through the research and some of the studies that a lot of people have done on these uh, bees, that bumblebees carry the pollen on their legs and that doesn't get carried on the rest of their body. Whereas leaf cutter bees literally can be covered 
in pollen and I'll insert a photo of this but the main thing is that they carry it on their belly and as they go flower to flower they actually put little bits and pieces um, on the flowers and plant parts across the, across the area. They are pretty homebody, so they generally don't travel too far. So long as they have flowers in their area, they kind of just hang out in that one position and they're incredibly smart. So they will always go back to their nest or their hidey hole and they generally try to stay within around 200 to 300 meters is the general consensus. So the USDA ARS is a research company that actually looked at leafcutter bees and how they worked in our gardens. And they showed that in a greenhouse end and netted experiment, they compared bumblebees to leafcutter bees. And what ended up happening is the leafcutter bees had really high rates of pollination, um, cross-pollination, and ultimately higher yields. It was drastic, like it was a huge, it was a drastic difference between bumblebees and leafcutters. It was estimated that one leafcutter bee will do the job of up to 20 honeybees. And again, this is a, a government researched program where they looked at this. I guess the downfall of the leaf cutter bee is that there is no honey. So there's no consumable for us humans. Now, some of you may think that's a downfall, but others will think that that's a good thing because anyone who's kept honeybees knows that keeping honey and the reserves and the sugar water and a whole host of other things is a lot of work. Not only that, but harvesting honey can actually harm bees and it will kill bees. Whereas these guys, it's more of a leave it and forget it. And I'll show you kind of what their nesting block looks like. It's not called a hive, it's called a block, a nesting block. And they were very sure to make sure I understood that over at uh, Backyard Pollinators. I kept on calling them um, hives. And they're like, no, 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 it's a block, it's a nesting block. Kind of funny. So how did we find these? How did we come and stumble across leaf cutter bees? Well, in the 1930s in World War II, soldiers from the US, Canada, actually noticed these fields of alfalfa that had a ton of leaf cutter bees. And they noticed what it did to the yields and how it affected the overall performance of the field. So what ended up happening was the Americans, Canadians, gathered up these bees and brought them back to North America. So yes, they are an invasive species, but they actually have very little ecological impact on the world around it. If you didn't know, honeybees also <laughs> are uh, invasive. They're not native to North America at all. That's also a fun fact. Those were also brought over from Europe, Asia area. If you, if you didn't know. So because of this, they don't survive well in a lot of Canadian climates. So in the US, when you have a leaf cutter bee, they can survive your winters in some areas or in some zones because it doesn't get cold enough. But in Canada, they're not going to survive a zone three or a zone two or zone five six it's just getting too cold during those winter months so what we need to do is we actually need to bring them inside so if you choose to keep your leaf cutter bees for generations then you would want to bring them indoors and actually store them in your fridge they like to be stored around plus 5 to plus 15 ish the nice part about about the backyard pollinator program is that they sell the blocks and the huts you can purchase these bring them home and they have a barcode on them. You can then send that barcode, you send them an email with the barcode on it and it will let them know how many bees you need, what block size you need. They take care of all the hard stuff. And what they do is they pay for it and everything, they ship it to your house when it's time. Now their shipment dates are from February to June and we'll get into a little bit as to why that may be. But if you just choose to get your shipped early in February, in my case, I got mine in March, you will need to store them in your fridge until it gets warm enough outside. Leaf cutter bees do not like to come to life until it is around 25 degrees Celsius outdoors. And the hotter, the better. So not direct sun heat, but just ambient heat. And that means that May and even early June, 
leaf cutter bees they're not going to they're not going to be perking up anytime soon so they do best being placed outdoors kind of beginning of june mid june but you may not see anything till late june july because it does take around 28 days for them to get going and for them to hatch so keep that in mind they do need warmer temperatures in order to come out of their little leaves so if you put off shipping them until June, you really don't have to start, store them inside at all. If that grosses you out or whatever, you can actually just put them directly outdoors, put your nesting block right in the little hut if you want to, and be done with it. You don't have to save them year to year. If you do leave them outside in the Canadian winter, they will pass away. They won't come back to life the next year and you can just order more in the years to come. However, if you do wanna keep them year after year, you do have to bring that nesting block indoors. And because I have leaf cutter bees now, and I'll show you what they look like, I'm actually going to be bringing mine indoors and I'll show you the process of storing these and everything. We're not gonna get into that too much in this video. So the males die after sexy time. They cease to exist. We could only hope that was the case for humans. <laughs> Just joking, I'm joking, that was mean. Okay, females live for five to eight weeks. And so, depending on how long your summer is, I was reading that you could get a second generation within the same summer because of how they lay their eggs and that sort of thing. So one female will lay up to 20 eggs and one third of those eggs are female. So 33% of the eggs laid, of the 20 eggs laid by the female end up being female. So that means that two thirds of your little critters are going to pass away after they have their sexy time. I find this interesting, but the females, I'm just gonna read off my screen here because I don't wanna mess this up. Females are a part of the task of locating a nesting site, cutting leaf material to create the actual cells they gather the pollen, the nectar, and they lay the eggs. So they kind of do everything. But the males, um, they just are for reproduction value. So that's kind of cool. There are two ways that they make their nesting material. And I'm just going to pull out a little bee here for you. Don't worry. You won't even be able to tell it's a bee. I actually showed this to Bob. And I was like, don't touch these. These are bees in the fridge. Like, don't eat them or anything. Because he eats everything. I'm not even kidding you. I wish I was joking. I'm not joking. And so I showed them to him. And he's like, those are bees? I didn't even know that. He said they look like a rabbit poop, which they kind of do a little bit. So these are what the bees look like. So you can get a little baggie, a little satchel like this. And you can actually just hatch them directly out of this little uh, bag. Obviously, keep them on a direct sun and keep them dry. But you can hatch them out of here. However... If you pull them out, I'm just going to do one to show you, you will notice that these little babies are inside of leaves. Oh, wrong side of the camera. So do you see how it's like in a little leaf? So you can't actually see them. They're, you don't, can't see like little head or anything poking out. But this is just a little leaf cigar. And there's a bee inside of this. So in order to make those little tiny cocoons, they have to harvest leaves. And this is the other reason why people don't always enjoy leaf cutter bees in their garden. They will leave circular holes in your leaves. That is guaranteed. Now, they will also do this to some flowers, very unlikely unless it's like a nice big flat leaf flower or a nice big flat petal. I, it's a trade-off. So they're going to eat your leaves, but they're not going to devour your leaves. They're not going to destroy the plants that they need to be able to gain pollen from. They will put some holes in them, but I wouldn't stress out about it too much because you're gaining pretty big benefit from them pollinating your entire garden. So you're going to get a huge return, especially if you're into vegetable gardening. If you're into flower gardening, then maybe bees aren't the best choice. These leaf cutter bees aren't the best choice for you. But if you your goal is yield, then this is your solution. So on alfalfa fields, for example, they make a huge impact. It is silly to do an alfalfa field without these bees in mind. So that is something to keep in mind. 
I honestly, the weird little circle things they make isn't a make it or break it for me. I was talking to a gardener because I was just asking about leaf cutter bees and if they liked them and everything. And they said that they had had leaf cutter bees and that they did leave these holes in their rose bush, I think it was, but that it would look so natural that people actually thought that the rose bush just looked pretty. Like it just had odd shaped leaves. So people were asking for cuttings because they wanted that rose bush because of the odd shaped leaves. So I mean, it's ultimately a trade off. I don't mind it, but some people will. But just to recap, Leaf cutter bee is completely non-aggressive. People who keep leaf cutter bees and are actual leaf cutter bee farmers, I guess you could call them, they don't even wear protection when dealing with these guys. They, I've watched videos, people handling them, literally, they do not sting. They are, one leaf cutter bee can do the equivalent of 20 honeybees when it comes to pollinating. They will increase your yields overall across your entire garden, which may be incredibly valuable to you if you are going for impacts of vegetables, but they will cut your leaves. Now, if you leave them outside in a Canadian winter, they will cease to exist in the next summer. However, if you choose to bring them indoors and store them in your fridge, you will have them year after year. Let's look at the products that this company makes. So they were kind enough to send this over. Thank you so much, you guys. You are awesome. Like I said, this is a family run business and it's just, these people are so kind. They are so kind. They are just a little Saskatchewan family. I was watching photos on their website and on their Instagram of their them putting their sons to work with the bee farming and stuff and it's just, I love wholesome stuff like this. I am such a sucker for that. So this is the baggie that they have. You can buy this on their website or you can send an email to them and they will uh, send these over to you if you want these with Bee Hut. You can purchase just the bees online, especially if you want to make your own hut. And then they have this really cool, cute house. This is their little, I have like a bee sitting right in the middle of this thing. You gotta go back into your little home in the fridge. Okay, so this is their little hut and they've got like this cute. So this is pre-assembled. You can get ones that are not assembled and that's really cool if you want like a little project and then you can paint them or do whatever you want to them. So this is what the little hut looks like. You can put this almost anywhere. The biggest thing is you don't want it in direct sun and you don't want it in a place that is going to get a ton of water on it. So obviously on a stand or on some sort of uh, bench is ideal. But this is super cute and they get these made in Humboldt by a program that employs special needs adults. I hope that's politically correct. I don't even know anymore. But they make these and the photos are so cute so they're super proud of these these are really really good quality you guys like i was honestly surprised when i pulled this out i i wasn't expecting something so hardy har har and this is actually what you would buy in the pv merit store or in the tsc stores or if you bought this online this is what would come in so this would be step one if you grab this now step two would be the block if you chose to put the block in the middle. Now, I mutilated my block because curiosity is the bane of my existence. So the block is supposed to come inside of this and you're not supposed to take it out. And that's supposed to insert into the hut. But like I said, I'm nosy. I had to know what was inside of this thing. So I took the block out and this is what it looks like. So you can see on the back, there's all these little babies inside of there just waiting to come out. And this has to be stored in the fridge until it's time to put them outdoors. And then it has this really pretty bee on the front. Now, what you can do is if you don't get the house and you just get the block, you can just get this and then they give you um, Velcro. And you can actually put this Velcro on a window so you can actually watch these bees at work all year long from the comfort of your air conditioned home. So that's really, really cool too. If you just want the leaf cutter bees without the house and you wanna watch them up close, you can put this on your window. So if you don't destroy it, which you're not supposed to destroy it, but like I said, curiosity killed the cat. 
And then it would go inside of this and it would look like that. So see how nice and tight that is in there? And you really, you can't tell I damaged that box that bad, but that is what it would look like. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Please go check out Backyard Pollinators. Maybe do some more research on leaf cutter bees. See if it's something that you want to get into. I'm personally pretty excited for it, but I'm also not a cut flower business, so I could see where this there would be a hangout for some people. These guys also have a pollinator seed packet you can get online for these bees. If you're concerned that you're not going to have enough flowers for them to eat, you can do that as well. And that is all I have for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye.